Hey YouTube fans, people in the web, it's me, Sam with SG1, back for another Star Trek official Starships collection review, this is issue 25. The USS Prometheus NX59650, uh, which is cool, 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 cool. So, specifications are, registry number NX59650, uh, Class Prometheus, constructed Beta Antares Shipyard, launched 2374, 126 metres, uh, 15 decks, top speed is warp 9.99, weaponry type uh, 12 phases, photon and quantum torpedoes, and multi vector assault mode. Now, in Star Trek Online, the Prometheus class ship is what we call an escort, a tactical escort, which can load cannons, so you can fire cannons like the Defiant can, which is pretty cool. Um, then we get the really nice render of the multi vector assault mode. Really awesome there. Um, it goes into the. Um, said it was built. And they go to the history, and then we've got various uh, instances of it there. But, oh, basically, in one episode, which is a message in a bottle. Um, you see the multi vector assault mode there attacking the uh, USS Bonshu. Um, you know, they showing you the, the EMH Mark II, the bridge. I really do like the bridge on this one. It looks really cool. I like the sort of, sort of tan, tan white grey colours. And then you've got the, the multi-vector assault mode, which is explained in better detail there. Which is really, really cool. Uh, up until that point, ships that separated were only limited to the Galaxy class ship. Um, which was deemed at source separation, but it's also referred to as a dual vector assault mode. Um, by his fanboys. Um, yeah. All three sections of the Prometheus were fitted with state-of-the-art weapons including type, uh, type 12 phaser arrays and photon and quantum torpedoes. Um, during battle they were linked to a central tactical computer in which coordinated their attack pattern to inflict maximum damage on their target. Um, beautiful tech specs of it there. I love these. These are cool. Uh, I like the multiple ones best when they do multiple ones. Um, efficient system. It took the Prometheus just over 10 seconds to decouple into the three sections while it was while it was in the process of decoupling. One in lights flash blue throughout the ship. Source and nacelles. The main the main hull or saucer section used in the uh, Used twin retractable nacelles that were not positioned above, well, which were positioned above and below the hull rather than on the sides. Only the upper nacelle was visible when the ship was in join mode. Yeah, tiny little nacelles. It's actually got six nacelles. It's got blade of armor. Um, the Prometheus used a blade of armor, which was first fitted to the Defiant class 2371. Similar technology was also employed by the Borg. Uh, and then we've got. Designing, I, again, I love this section. Designing the uh, Prometheus there. Uh, and then we've got some pre-designs pre of it there, uh, which are really cool. I've got to get a better vocabulary because I keep saying the same things. Rick Sternbach designed this bad boy. Rick Sternbach, early, early, earliest of sketches show that there's the rapidly setting, settled on the elongated design, four nacelles, given that the saucer would separate much the same way I had on the Enterprise D, but the question was the rest of the ship, how it break up and create five independent vessels rather than three. Um, then we get another under you know, a um, dorsal view of it there. And then we get a, like an like a almost finished design and then we get the, the five versions of it, which originally designed for split into five five separate sections. So we're getting like, you know, um, Sort of a cruiser, two es two little escorts, and then two um, battleships, which is, you know. And then we've got the final design of it. Yeah, there you go, we've got more design design of it there. All the, all the separate pieces. Um, really do like this. That's a really cool picture. Um, yeah, Eagle Moss. Um, you probably won't watch his videos, but if, if enough people get together 
I would like a, every once in a while I would like a um, a model of a design a pre-design because some of the pre-designs are in fact cool as well which would be awesome if you could do that and of course we've got the uh, on-screen section um, best beard in Star Trek Voyager um, and it's only appearance well only major appearance was Message in the Ball. It does appear in the last episode, um, um, Endgame, and you do see one in Enterprise in Azanti Prime when Archer is. when um, there's a big battle going on, and Archer uh, is, is taken to the, the 26th century by Daniels about the Enterprise J, uh, which apparently we're getting, which is pretty cool. Um, which is the Enterprise J, and there's, you can witness a battle in the in the uh, in the window, and one of the ships is a Prometheus class. Um, as I said on Star Trek Online, um, you can be you can use a Prometheus class. You can uh, have multi vector assault mode, and you can use cannons on it as well, which is pretty awesome. So Trivia, um Confusingly, Starfleet seems to have more than one ship called USS Prometheus. As well as the experimental ship we saw on Star Trek Voyager, there was a Nebula class that appeared in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Episode Second Sight, Season 2 episode. Um, we can only assume that the earlier vessel was destroyed, probably during the Dominion War, having the name free to be used on the prototype. And the Prometheus was two, has two different registry numbers on the hull. Uh, two different registry numbers. The hull clearly says NX59650, but the inside of the ship, the displays say NX74913. This was a result of some confusion between the BFX crew and the scient scientific, the, sci the, the art departments. Uh, registries are normally sequential, so the higher the, they are, the later the ship was commissioned. The scenic art department figured that that meant the Prometheus should have a high register number, whereas the BFX team used a lower register number to imply the ship had been development for a long time. DMH is intrigued to learn the counterpart on Voyager made additions to a program allowing to have sexual relations. Yeah, um, there's a lot of fan uh, speculation about the register number. Um, like it does say there, the, the 59650, which is clearly visible on the hull, um, and then on, on the bridge and that, it's... Seven four seven four nine one three. Now there's two um on oh, the back there's the the separation. Now there's two um theories regarding this. Uh one of which is because the ship was deemed classified and only four people in all of Star Parade uh because the ship was classified and and only four people in all of Star Starfleet were trained to operate it, it was given two registry numbers. To throw people off. Also, like the the book suggests, that it's been in development for a long time. So the the, the designed then then it was shelved. Then the bulk threat came, and then you know the bulk threat wasn't as prevalent. So they shelved it again, and then the Dominion War was happening. I think shit, we need a super awesome battleship. Let's bring it back. And the Metro number stayed. Um, or like I said, just simply it's just a mistake by by the the different effects teams and stuff. So. But anyway, onto the model itself, and I have to say, this is being this is quite possibly one of my favourites. Look at this, an X seven five nine six five R. This is pretty cool. No register number, no register number underneath. But then again, there isn't one in the episode, so they're taking them how they appear in the episode. And there's a bit of dust on there for some reason. Very nice. I like it. It looks exactly like it does on the on the screen. Um, fauna cells are great. There's the tiny little one in there. Now my only nitpick is doesn't separate. Same with the galaxy, you can't separate it. It'd be nice to have the two options because I'd have definitely got two. One to display in combined mode and the other one to display in separate mode. Um, Eagle Moss, please get onto that. Um, yeah. That's the only nitpick. Other than that, it's fantastic. I love the detailing. I love the the way the um, Aztecing goes. Um, all the detailing on it is fantastic. The colour, the matched perfectly to the episode. They've got the uh, right cell um, 
uh, right in the sill um, pennants um, and the, the light piping is pretty cool um, I, I really do like this one a lot apart from like it's it should have been um, been able to separate, but you know you can't have everything. You really can't. And I, be, I do believe that this is the very first version of the Prometheus that's ever been out as a model, um, because you you never see this model ever. You really don't. And it's nice to have a physical model of it. Um, but yeah, I like it a lot. Like I say, I just wish it separated. And you get the base, um, which is. USS Prometheus five nine NX five nine six five O. I can't talk today for some reason, um, and it fits on the stand like so, and boom, ready to battle the Romulans, or the Dominion, or the Borg, or whoever else gets in the way. Yeah, it, it's really nice. I do recommend you get this one. A lot of people have been complaining about the deflected dish, but to be fair, I'm not really bothered. I think it looks all right. But yeah, it, it, it's a ship you never see ever as a model kit, and it's nice to have a physical model of it. I've always liked this ship. I've always liked the episode, Message in a Bottle. Um, it's one of Voyager's better ones. So, yes, well, that's that's me. Uh, thanks for prattling on, and hopefully I should get my next next ships in the next few days. Me, Tholian Web Spinner, and my uh, Romulan Bed of Prey. And then, after that, it's... The Mackie ship, Valjean, and it is the Jem'Hada attack ship. Oh, yeah. Can't wait for that bad boy. Now, that's me, and I will catch you all later. Bye for now.